Hey brothers and sisters, it's good to be back. It's the 6th of August and I have a really important series of videos to make. Two videos that go side by side. And um, the reason I wish to share this one first is this is what I was instructed to do. I had been praying on the 26th of July what to share next on my YouTube channel. And I was told these words, the number seven. I was then told to write the Greek letter. And of course, I was most puzzled by this and I needed to do some research. But brothers and sisters, I was astounded what I found out. And as I was instructed to write the Greek letter, brothers and sisters, I did just that. I had to look it up online. I had no idea what it looked like. As you can see, it looks similar to the shape of the number seven. But the interesting thing was that I found that in the Greek alphabet, the numerals are actually written as they are letters, just as the Lord said. He said, write the Greek letter, not the Greek numeral, because the, the new numerals, the numbers in Greek, are letters. Isn't that amazing? That was the first miracle that the Lord did for me that night. The other thing was, as I prayed about this over the days that followed, the Lord said to me um, that I was, he showed me firstly a vision of a purple pencil. And he said to take up the purple pencil and to write the Greek letter. Now, brothers and sisters, I don't have a purple pen with me right now. So that is why I'm showing you the purple number seven. But I believe that the Lord wanted me to, to understand the color was so important. And the purple in the days of Jesus was a, a color used by the royalty and the wealthy only. Because the dye that made the purple color was incredibly expensive. And brothers and sisters, Jesus wanted me to stress the purple color when I wrote this um, to signify his kingship, his royalty. And as we go on, you will see this develop more and more as I continue to share things with you. But what does number seven mean in Greek? It means divine and sacred. And just to help you understand some other biblical significance of the number seven, there's a really good article you can find by this lady, Demora Smythe. Um, but she says here, what is the significance of number seven in the Bible? It symbolizes completion or perfection. And everyone, uh, just going down to the bottom line there, um, but you can read all this later. Um, she says it also signifies the fulfillment of promises and oaths. And I believe this is so important at this present point in time because uh, when I move on to the second video, you will see that the Lord is pointing to the end of days, to the things that are set up and going to be coming to fruition shortly. And um, that's why I feel it is so important that you understand this message about the number seven is from the Lord because he wants you to understand this concept before we go on to um, talking about um, the Antichrist spirits that are set in um, on the board game of life, on the stage, and it is about to come to pass. That is what he has told me. So everyone, I apologize for the grainy appearance of this, these pictures, but it is night time and it is bad lighting. But I began to ponder on why the Lord asked me to draw the number seven or the letter seven in Greek. And brothers and sisters, as I prayed about it, the interesting thing that happened was I felt that this little dash here, it just came to my mind that this represented the crown 
of Christ. And then when I looked at this shape in myself, I felt it represented the scepter, the scepter of the Lord Jesus that signified his royalty. And you know what? I thought that was just my thoughts. But then I found out some incredible things that I'm going to share with you now. I found out that this letter uh, called Lamed, which is Hebrew, is just the same sort of shape to the um, number seven in Greek. As you can see, it has the same curve. It has the little bit at the top. And brothers and sisters, when I read about this, I was astounded to see that Lamed in Hebrew came to stand for the number 30. I haven't actually looked up to see what that means, but um, it's thought to be a pictogram of the good shepherd's crook. You know, the shepherd's crook that they used to guide the sheep with. Or the other thing they thought it might be is a pictogram of a lion. And I thought of the Lion of Judah and the Good Shepherd. Brothers and sisters, isn't that incredible? The Lord is leading us with this number seven to think about who he is. Jesus is the Good Shepherd. He is the shepherd with his shepherd's crook who um, leads his sheep. Those who believe, put their belief and trust in him. He will lead us and guide us and keep us. He is the good shepherd. But, brothers and sisters, he is also the king of kings, the lion of Judah, the king who sits upon the throne with the scepter in hand. And as I uh, say that, I would like to read Hebrews 1, verse 8. This is the King James Version, and it says, but unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is for ever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Now everyone, I want to share what came after he told me to take up the purple colour and to draw the Greek number seven. Um, he, these words followed, which are intensely interesting and sorrowful. What he said to me was this, it breaks my heart. And then he said the strangest words, the dogs woke up just before midnight. And just to save time, everyone, I was going to read Matthew 25, 6 about the um, ten virgins. And it says there that um, it was around the time of midnight that um, the bridegroom came. And the ten wise virgins were ready and waiting for their Lord. But this, the, uh, sorry, the five wise virgins were ready and waiting, but there were five that were not prepared. And I believe this is what the Lord is saying is breaking his heart is that there are those that are not ready and you probably um, are thinking what did he mean by the dogs woke up just before midnight and um, you will see in scripture that the Lord refers to the Gentiles as the dogs and there is um, some scripture where um, uh, Jesus is explaining um, that the dogs are under the table and it speaks of them devouring the scraps um, of the owners of the house. Um, and when you read that parable, you will understand that he was speaking of the Gentiles. The Gentiles were the dogs under the table, um, receiving the good things um, that really were for the Jews. And um, I believe that what the Lord is saying is that he is sorrowful. It breaks his heart that the Jewish people are not ready when he soon cometh as the bridegroom. Brothers and sisters, take time to search out those scriptures and read them if you want full understanding. 
But our Lord is saying his heart is breaking for the Jewish people. Now, just one other word I want to share with you before I explain another really important concept briefly um, with you that the Lord shared um, was that he said to me this phrase, the king always comes first. And brothers and sisters, I pondered on this and because there is another video I need to make about the Antichrist spirits to come, I wonder if Jesus was saying, the king comes first and then the Antichrist spirits. But brothers and sisters, we will have to see. But I think we can fairly safely say that will happen. Anyway, I must get on and share this last thing, which is also incredibly important. The last thing that the Lord told me after explaining to me that I must speak about the number seven was also puzzling but incredibly, incredibly important. And I see now what he means. He said these words, anyone can find glass diamonds. And in my diary, I wrote this. Glass diamonds represent something that looks like the real thing, but it isn't. It's false. And brothers and sisters, I believe that he wants us to understand this incredibly important concept now, because when the Antichrist comes, we need to know the true diamond we have to have him secure in our hearts. We have to have to have put our hope and trust in him and know his voice, our good shepherd, so that he can lead us through this difficult time. We need to be sure we are ready for the wedding. And that brings me to share another really amazing thing. On the 26th, he also said this. Don't forget that you are engaged. And he showed me a case, a ring case, one of those little tiny ring boxes, and it was open on top of a dresser. And then he said, be ready for the wedding. Isn't that amazing? Be ready for the wedding. Now, we have spoken about how Jesus said anyone can choose glass diamonds. Brothers and sisters, he is beseeching us to find the true diamond. What did he say? I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. In 2 Thessalonians Sorry, everyone. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9, it says, The wicked one will come with the power of Satan and perform all kinds of false miracles and wonders to use every kind of wicked deceit on those who will perish. Satan will be trying to imitate Christ. He will be trying to deceive even the elect. The believers in Christ with miracles and wonders we have to know our true diamond and finally brothers and sisters I just want to read Revelations 19 and it's about the rider on the white horse called faithful and true it is with justice that he judges and fights his battles his eyes were like a flame of fire and he wore many crowns on his head just like that number seven that I felt was the crown on top of the scepter. Um, he wore many crowns on his head and he had a name written on him, but no one except himself knows what it is. The robe he wore was covered in blood and his name was the word of God. Hallelujah. So dearest family, remember that you are engaged and be ready for a wedding. Bye for now.